Welcome back to Visible Theology. I am Manny Benton, and I have another awesome artist on today for our 10th episode. I think, you know, 10 kind of thing is a pretty big number. So we've done 10 episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have on an awesome guest. Her name is Catherine Ward. Catherine, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. It's, I'm excited to have you on. I, uh, I love you. Yeah, as I told you, I've been following your work for a little while now and um, definitely enjoy it. So excited to get into this conversation. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. It's my first podcast. It's a big <laughs> moment, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. All right. So I always like to start off asking um, a person for their testimony. And so you can feel free to share however little, however much you, you want to share. Cool. Okay, so um, I guess I'll start by saying I grew up in the Chicagoland area, suburb north of the city, and I'm an only child. I grew up in a family that is believers of Jesus and of the Catholic denomination. So growing up, you know, I was baptized as a baby. Um, I went to Sunday school and, and did, you know, communion and all that stuff. I don't know how much you know about the Catholic faith and stuff, but I went through all of the processes that you do as a Catholic, but um, it was always just like, this is what we do, right? This is just the motions we go through as a family, but it was always very like, like a chore, you know, my heart wasn't in it growing up um you know and my parents would go to church like pretty much every week but they didn't force me to go with them um and you know I think they always wanted me to kind of find it on my own um when I was in high school I struggled really really bad um specifically with depression and anxiety and um my senior year of high school is actually when I started to get into art. So I don't know if you know this about me or some people um, listening to this might, but before I did art, I had this YouTube channel that was all about um, makeup and beauty and DIY and stuff. And growing up, it was like my life and but it also brought a lot of pain for me. And um, anyway, senior year of high school, I kind of found art and started to really move on from that phase of life. And um, I went to this art program at Otis College, which is the college I ended up attending. Um, but I met this girl named Hannah and she <laughs> like, basically introduced me to Jesus. Um, I remember like meeting her and like, she was like, girl, I believe in Jesus. And she had this <laughs> jean jacket that said Jesus. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> like, I had never been around people who like talk about Jesus. And um, I was like, okay, cool. Um, but you know, I, in high school, like I said, I struggled a lot. I didn't really have friends. I was bullied a lot. Um, and so she invited me to go to church with her. And I was like, so excited that like someone wanted to hang out with me. <laughs> um, and so I was like, okay, let's go to church. So me, her and her boyfriend went to church, um, which is Hillsong, Los Angeles, if you've heard of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, we went and I was like, shook. I had never seen a church that was like not a like a Catholic church with the priest and the pews and the um you know like a standard Catholic church like Hillsong for people who don't know you know there's a stage there's lights you know people are casually dressed you know it's a more comfortable environment I guess or at least it was for me so um you know, I was very like blown away, like the music and the lights and, um, <laughs> pastor Ben, when he gave his message, um, he was talking about how Jesus loves you and that, you know, 
people will hurt you, but Jesus loves you and he sees you and he wants to walk with you and there's hope for your life. And I was like, what? Like, that's so crazy, you know? Cause I was like really, really depressed. Like to be really blunt, you know, I, I wanted to take my own life at a point, like it was, it was stark. And so, you know, at the end they were like, you know, does anyone want to give their life to Jesus, invite Jesus into their heart? And I like raised my hand. And then I was like, I don't really know what this means, but based on what he's telling me, I'm like, yeah, I like want Jesus. Um, so yeah, basically from there forward, like my life changed forever. And, um, I moved out to LA permanently to go to Otis, um, full-time for college. And, um, you know, Hannah has been one of my best friends. Like she is now, you know, like a lifelong friend Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, like her and her husband, Harold, that husband that was her boyfriend, um, basically were the ones who like taught me basically everything I knew, you know, at first, like they taught me, this is the Bible and like, this is how you read it. (laughs) And, you know, (laughs) like basic stuff like that. They taught me everything. And we were just like on fire for Jesus. And when you feel that, you know, after feeling like I want to like die because I'm so sad, it's like nothing will ever be the same. You know, it's just never the same. So um, it was a huge blessing. And we had this Christian club at school and we were just like running around the campus, like singing Jesus songs all day. It was amazing. (laughs) um but yeah pretty much from then on I had this very strong conviction right um because I started to grow more and more in Jesus and I was like that's what my art's about like it all started to make sense because I had gotten into art but I wasn't like like I didn't know what my voice was or what I wanted to say then when I found Jesus, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah. And then, so I started my art as a ministry and it has just grown ever since, I guess. <laughs> so it's a long winded answer of my testimony. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was awesome. Um, you know, I have quite a few friends who have struggled through depression and anxiety and have definitely, um, considered and have tried suicide so um you know that's nothing to play with and it's all and it's always awesome to hear someone honestly say that because it's, it's helpful to others who who struggle with those things for sure yeah and I have such a heart for mental illness and people who struggle with that like you know it's really really serious and I also think it's like really taboo like people are scared to talk about it like I think even pastors um, in sermons are really scared to like yeah. talk about that because it's it's really hard yeah. but I have such a heart for people that um, struggle with that because it's really really serious and you know I think a lot of people because of past hurts or things with Christianity like they've encountered a bad experience something like that they think it's like oh like as soon as you say Jesus, some people will be like, "Oh, mm-hmm. this again," you know. Um, but I'm, I, I'm like, no, like Jesus can actually heal you. Like that's so yeah. crazy. Yeah. And um, you know, like we live in a society where it's like, you know, believe what you want. You know, just take a medication, do yoga, you'll feel better. I'm like, no, like actually, Jesus Christ, like can heal you from the inside out, like yeah. forever, not just like makes you feel better for like today but like actually forever yeah like that's so insane I, I can't get over it like every day I'm like wow yeah. we have a healer amen like you know because God didn't have to be like that right like he could have been anything but he chose to be good yes I just can't like get over that like that's so awesome yes it is like what <laughs> he chose to be good like yeah Um, so yeah, so there actually is an answer to all those struggles, to that depression, that anxiety, like that is the answer. And I feel like, especially in this time, like with this pandemic and, you know, people are struggling a lot (laughs) 
Yeah. And um, I think like now more than ever, it's like really important to talk about Jesus. That's right. Share about him. That's right. Amen. Amen. Do you think that that finding your like creative outlet through art helped you out even that much more with those those struggles? Because I find, yeah, yeah, I find oh, that yeah. can be helpful. Yeah, for sure. Um, because for me, I feel like that's a way I communicate or express myself. Um, and you know, for a lot of other people, it's like music or dance or even people who aren't necessarily creative. But yeah. you know, for me, it was it was just like when I found painting, there was something about it that was different than anything else. You know, like I had been into makeup and stuff before and I like to edit videos but like when I found painting there was something like different about it and then when I found Jesus I was like oh like I get it now like because I'm actually supposed to be doing this so I can like share the word of God like that's what this is for um so it wasn't just like for me a hobby that had no meaning like but it had depth to it which right changes it you know because it's not just like something I'm doing to pass time but it's something that I'm doing to um develop my relationship with God and, and worship and prayer and then also share it with others to help them yeah so I think that changes everything yeah yeah um, absolutely amen <laughs> <laughs> so this is a I was telling you a uh, a women's history month special and um and so I've, 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 I've interviewed one woman so far. And so I have this goal to interview, you know, women throughout the month and, and ask them about what womanhood is. And for some who are mothers, what motherhood means to them. So when you hear that, that word womanhood, uh, what does that mean to you? What, what does it mean to you to be a woman? It's a good question. Um... <laughs> woman well I will say when I grew up you know I was taught you know boys like sports and girls like makeup and <laughs> girls wear skirts and they like pink you know yep. which I guess I still like pink but it's fine um <laughs> <laughs> but um so we're taught these really like conventional things of like boy versus girl right or like in society today we call them gender norms right Okay, but um, what does the Bible actually say about being a woman? Because that's like not what the Bible tells us being a woman is. It doesn't say like, if you wear a skirt, you're a woman. Um, I think Proverbs 31 is a really good example of what a godly woman is. So I can't recite it from beginning to end, but <laughs> from Proverbs 31, we know that a godly woman is hardworking she is trustworthy of her husband's heart and she fears God. She takes care of her household and she loves others. Um, so to me, that's what it means to be a woman, um, quite simply. But yeah. Amen. Amen. So uh, are there any women who have been impactful to your life? I know you mentioned one earlier who basically helped bring you to Christ and um, and then also, are there any, any woman who you admire? Definitely my mom. And I know she's going to watch this and want a shout out. So, hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> um, my mom, for sure. My mom is like my best friend. And, <laughs> you know, even though um, we live basically across the country, like, I can't do anything without her. <laughs> Like pretty much I'm like mom how do I do this you know she helps me with everything like there is nothing in my life I don't share with her um you know so I would definitely say my mom she is a very amazing woman so. <laughs> yeah yeah I get it I, I'm the only child too so oh yeah you know, I grew up with a single mother so I get that their, oh yeah their relationship it. yeah I get it for sure <laughs> for sure all right so um one thing that I find um in the church is that the in most churches I guess across the United States at least that I see um is that 
the visual arts seem to get um, not as championed as um, as other arts within the church. Um, now I know you 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 go to you go to Hillsong, LA, right? I do. We've been okay. we've been closed for a while, but yeah. because of COVID, in person. I yeah. So I know like Hillsong, they're really pretty good at like visual arts and stuff. I don't know if they have like a specified visual arts ministry, but um, what are you seeing in the in the Christian visual arts community? And how do you think that the church can kind of like bridge that that gap um, and help champion the visual arts more? Okay, this is a really big question, and I could go on for like days about this. Um, <laughs> so you can at any point be like, "Have next question." Um, but take your time. Okay, so I. Going through four years of art school, I've learned a lot about the art world slash the Christian art world slash what people think about Christian art. Mm. And I will say one thing I've noticed a lot about the art world in general is that it tends to be like extremely secular. Mm. Um, and so I will say, and I, I've shared this um, on my page a lot. I was in a class of mostly pretty, I would say actually probably all unbelievers, except for me. And I would like get up there every single week and talk about Jesus. Like um, for, we would do art critique. So you'd put your art on the wall, you talk about it, and then people can basically say whatever they want. So um, people did not like that I got up there and talked about Jesus. I did not wow. like that. And um, my four years at Otis were really hard because I was um, bullied a lot, excluded a lot, um, made fun of everything you can think of, um, you know, by my classmates and for my faith, but also my art and my clothes and the way I talked and how short I am and anything you could think of. They picked yeah. on me. Yeah. Um, and I have learned that, you know, art is really powerful. Um, and especially when you take Jesus into the context of art, it's like really convicting, right? Um, people who have a hard heart have a really difficult time being convicted with the truth right? Being convicted with the name of Jesus. It's like really hard for them. And, you know, I even had a teacher who called himself a Christian and he would just pick apart my work. Like, you know, this isn't a ministry. This isn't, you know, this is not, they would just tear apart every single little thing in my paintings. Like, like this one piece, it was like, why is there two birds and why is there three feathers on the white right ring and why is you know it breaking apart the number of things and it was real like really intense um but on the flip side of that i think the history of christian art in particular like you know the christian art you see like in museums and stuff like historical art um carries a big historical burden with it that is hard to um, compete with or align with today. Um, so I actually wrote an essay on this, which I'm not gonna read my essay, <laughs> but I wrote an essay um, about how Jesus was depicted in paintings over time um, and in different cultures at different times. So you will see different cultures all painted Jesus differently, even though there was no physical description of him in the New Testament. Yeah. And it's so interesting because like people were painting Jesus all in their own ways that were relatable to them. But then we see how the paintings were interpreted and adapted and they all carry their own historical burdens with them. So I think that modernizing that or bringing that into today can be difficult because people can't um, detach the two. Um, so 
what you would think is like the typical Christian imagery, right? The lion, the lamb, the cross, the dove, you know, the wine, whatever, like the typical things you see in the Christian historical paintings. Um, and then, so that's typically what you see in a painting is like, oh, that's a Christian art because I'm recognizing those symbols. Um, but that is what has been done in history, but that's not actually the limit of what we can do now. And I think the difficulty is showing people that. So um, is this making any sense? Oh yeah, total sense. Total <laughs> so sense. like I would have teachers, you know, that would be like, well, you know, like if you even look at some of my paintings, like can I, like, let me just look at, okay. I had this one painting if you've seen it called Love Within Us. And it's not one of the paintings I showed you today, but <laughs> we're gonna talk about, but it is of DNA with the roses in it. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm -hmm. I had this one teacher who said that that painting was a white supremacist painting because it had roses in it, which is the flower of England. Wow. Even That's though that- that is like literally the opposite of what I was saying. So a person is always going to interpret imagery through their own lens, right? Like they're always gonna see in a certain way. And so I can intend things a certain way. I can write a caption, but if they're gonna always interpret it at, like in, as something like ungodly or blasphemous, that's like always just how they're gonna interpret it. Or they're always just gonna see it as like, well, that isn't Christian because it doesn't have this. But bringing it into today, um, I think there. I think there needs to be more Christian art, uh, visual art paintings. First and foremost, there needs to be more because we need to break this like stigma. Yeah. Art is so powerful, and it can bring people to Jesus. Like that's like literally the most important part. So I don't want to just paint things, oh, because it matches history and makes sense with this one painting from like a thousand years ago. No, I want to paint something that shows the word of God. Yeah. And I shouldn't be limited by what other people think is Christian art. Right. So a perfect example of that is like, the paintings I, I sent you today, which we will talk about, you know, my yeah. birds on the anchor painting, you know, my, my hummingbird painting, like mm -hmm. there's so much, but I think, I think people need to champion the creativity inside of them that they really know that they can discern is from God yeah. because that's what's, that's what's going to bring the word. Um, and I think that takes a complete surrender to the Lord of like, I want to paint what you put on my heart, not trying to design your imagery in a way so that other people will understand it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Totally, totally. Like, I'm not going to design this so it matches paintings of the past. I'm not going to design this. So, you know, I'm going to design this like the way that I see it. So a lot of times I will see images like when I'm worshiping or praying and I will literally like see these visions. Um, and then that's what I paint. And I don't question it and I don't fight it. And I'm like, okay, this is like, this came to me in a holy moment. So that's what I'm going to paint. And so I, I know like, so walking away from art school and all the bullying and the adversity and the, you know, this isn't Christian and this isn't ministry, you know, this is weird. I walked away being like, um, okay, the most important thing that God cares about is your heart. Yes. Um, God cares about who you're becoming. And the reality of it is, is God cares more about who I am as a person than how good my paintings are. Yeah. 
that's just the reality of it. Um, so I walked away from art school saying, okay, where is my heart? Well, my heart is to love God, to love others, and to be a fisher of men, right? To bring people to Jesus. And so that I think is the most important thing in arts today in the church. And so some people, you know, maybe don't have the heart or desire to paint. Um, I pray that there can be more of that, but if there isn't, what the most important thing is, is that we are going into the world, loving God, loving others and bringing people to Jesus. Like that, that is so important. Amen. So, that was like long stance over. <laughs> no, that, that was good. That was good. Yeah, because because part of my theory with it is um, the fact that there are so many kids who grew up in church and there aren't ministries for visual arts. And so yeah. it's like they don't even know that they could they can do this and, and do it for the glory of God. Um yeah. And so that that's kind of like where my heart is now is to see more churches. It's something that um I'm starting a, a church plant um, later this year, and it's one thing I'm talking to our lead pastor about um, wow. is that like I really want to see us start an actual visual arts ministry that that serves the youth so that they have something to say. Okay, I can actually do this as I grow up and as I'm older, I can actually draw and, and paint for the glory of God. Um, and so I think because like, like I said, with music, um, I, I know I've said it on Visible Theology a few times, but I call music more like walking theology because you, you know, you walk with it and yeah. art, um, visual arts more like visible theology, you know, which is the reason why I call this visible theology. And, um, and with music, you know, as a songwriter, so often, um, sometimes you can write songs that's from, from text something sometimes it's from like life experiences um and specifically with worship music you're always trying to um point it to christ and have some kind of vertical um worship within that song um but but you see so often in i, I guess i won't say so often but in some songs yeah. where there is some some theology that's lacking like there's some bad theology in it yeah. but at the end of the day like it's coming from the heart. Like I would say, like, like I know you know this song, How He Loves, by, mm -hmm. uh, originally by uh, John McMillan. And you look at the lyrics and the lyrics, like they're not necessarily directly from scripture. You know what I mean? Like some of them are, but it's more poetic. But when you hear the story behind it, then you realize like, wow, this came from a heart that was really just, you know, just at that point in his life, I think it was just broken. And it was, I think, at one of the lowest points in his life, yet he was just singing about how yet still God loves and, and still the goodness of God. Um, and so like with art, there is like this, there's this um, balance between, especially with Christian art, properly depicting things, but then there, I think there is creative freedom to express um, and, and give theology behind text where you're not necessarily, it's not like an exegesis of a text where you're literally trying to draw exactly what happened. Like there is room for that. And at the same time, you can't really do it because we don't have, there's not pictures in the Bible. You know, we can only go by what is written in the Bible. So it's still going to be theology on it. And I think there is room for creative freedom, you know, and even like you mentioned about depicting Jesus so one of the things that my, my grandfather was uh, was really passionate about, he, he actually did in his whole doctorate dissertation, um, it was pretty much about um, depict, depicting Jesus and depicting different characters in the Bible and how it, it's been different throughout throughout time. And, um, and because, because he went to Howard University, he tried to um, kind, of, uh, kind of back this up with where it's room for creative freedom for different cultures. Um, but there has been like this part in history where this point in history where certain depictions of Jesus, certain depictions of different biblical characters have been forced upon people as if it's like, yeah, 
that's the that's the thing. So that's where we have to be careful. But at the same time, I think there is freedom to express from from your heart. So I, I completely agree with what she said. Yeah, that like I wish I could send you my essay. I know it's boring. You probably don't want to read it. I don't even know if I can find it. But that <laughs> like reading. like so aligned with um my thesis for senior year. Fun. Wow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's also like what you said, a way to read visually, right? Like mm -hmm. reading a painting versus like reading a text um, is completely different. And I think as an artist, you, a uh, visual artist, you have to consider how people read things visually as opposed to text. And that can be really tricky. And you also like can't control how people will see things, yeah. you know? So the most important thing, like I said, is like discernment, like, okay, I, I am confident this is from God when I'm painting this. And, you know, I, I think it's important, like, you know, I know people in my church who are visual artists, but they don't make art for the glory of God. Like they still have a body work that's like quite secular. And I'm like, well, why, why do we have to separate them, right? Like, and I think that a lot of people still separate like their art and their faith and I, we don't need to separate them. Like actually they're more beautiful together. And I pray that more artists can, can do that. Um, yeah. And I, th I think it's, it's really hard also in this, day and age and social media which is you know cliche but it's like being a christian is like not politically correct <laughs> yes, yes it is like so not yes, um yes. so i think it it's scary for people to like you know dedicate their body of work to jesus because it's like you put yourself out there as a christian it's like like i said automatically when you say jesus people are like no <laughs> you know and I had people in my class who um there was a Muslim girl and um a Jewish guy and they would come up and share their work and no one would say a thing wow. you know when I come up there and talk about Jesus everyone's like fighting <laughs> like you know it's, <laughs> it's like wait but that's like kind of fire that the name of Jesus is so convicting yeah like that's yeah. pretty fire it like, is, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, you know, I know, especially in 2020, and I think you have a, you have an art piece that we're going to talk about persecution. So I'm really interested in hearing what you say about that. But yeah. <laughs> 20, <laughs> in 2020, um, I think a lot of people, especially in the, in the Christian, the, the capital C church, who were screaming persecution and stuff, you know, like, first of all, we in America, we haven't quite seen like true persecution, but even like the in a sense, persecution that we see and like through your art, just the challenges that have come through it. Anytime we mention Jesus name and how polarizing it is, like from what I read in the Bible, we should be rejoicing at that. Yeah. Like when, when, when Jesus talked about persecution, he said to rejoice. And, and I think there's a reason for that. It's because like ultimately we're, we're speaking the truth. And so it's really nothing for us to get all uptight about and you know, feel like, oh, my point is not coming across. Like, no, you're saying the name of Jesus. You're planting the seed. Let God do the rest, you know? Like, and, and I feel like, and although it could create this tension, like sometimes you need that tension and it just creates a conversation where, you know, maybe somebody's wall does come down and then, you know, you can really give them the gospel, so. Yeah, like I remember this, this specific guy, I will never forget him. He was like just just hardcore atheist, you know. And he would come up to me and like randomly quote like Leviticus and be like, well, what does this mean? Well, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a polarizing word, Jesus. Um, but but that's really powerful as well. And I, I think for some reason, people can't be confronted with the truth. You know, I remember one question I always got in art school was, well, 
if Jesus loves me so much, but I don't believe in him, then why would he send me to hell? And I, which when you're sitting there in a room full of people, it's like, I'm not a pastor. Like it's, and you feel the tension, like in your chest, you know, it's like awkward. It's hard. And I'm just like, Jesus doesn't send people to hell. He actually died to save us. And it's just like, if you want to accept that or not, it's like our, the penalty of our sin is death, right? So we're already dead in our sin, but Jesus died to give us life. So imagine it like we're standing in fire. It's like, if you're going to get on the lifeboat or not, Mm. like that, that's what it is a relationship with Jesus, like accepting his sacrifice, his love, his grace, his mercy. Like, so he doesn't want to send you to hell. He doesn't like that. He came like God literally came out of eternity into time to die for you that's a huge deal so amen that was a pretty pastoral (laughs) that was a pretty pastoral response very good (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, those are those are the most difficult questions that one and like the one when people ask like why do bad things happen like those kind of questions those are always ones that are like oh i like sometimes i i like listening sometimes to podcasts where people kind of like ask questions about god and i was like i wish i was here to say something (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. you know it's funny i just i just um i'm actually this year i'm committing to reading the bible from cover to cover like not bouncing around but just like really? really yes literally yeah. my schedule is right there i'm not like <laughs> me and my dad are doing it together that's awesome dude i was at the dmv today for four hours oh no and i read all the way through deuteronomy <laughs> 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 i was like well you know what <laughs> gotta find the best time, good time. Good <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah but i would you know just reading back of how um, of how God rescued the Israelites from Egypt, um, you know, it was really interesting to read it back because, you know, you can read things a million times, but, you know, sometimes you just see things differently when you go back and read it in. And so now that if anybody asks me that question, I'm going to turn them back to when God rescued the Israelites from, from Egypt because, um, you know, God is God. He could have immediately rescued them if he wanted to. Um, but you see throughout that entire story, it was like, this is so that you will know that I am God, you know, yeah. and that this is the best thing for for my glory. And so I, I get I get chills even thinking about that. But that that's what I think now, you know, um, when anybody asks me that question, I'm going to I'm going to turn back there and, and read through that for sure. Yes. Yeah. And, and the Old Testament can be really hard right? Like Leviticus and, you know, when it's talking about all the rules and the laws, it's, it's hard um, to talk about. I'd, I'd always get questions about that. Yeah. And I, the matter, the fact of the matter is I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. I just don't. None of us do. None of us do. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was, I was, reading that you know because i'm doing the bible in a year it is so good and i like recently god had just been speaking to me like over and over and over like the story of pharaoh Mm -hmm. and joseph like like he was in like prison for something he didn't even do and he sat in prison and he was like still worshiping god And I cry when I can't find parking. (laughs) Like, that's how amazing his faith was, you know? Yeah. So. Amen. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, I live in LA, okay? It's hard out there. (laughs) Well, I I get it. I get it. I live live right outside DC, so it's pretty hectic. It's pretty hectic this way, too. (laughs) Yes. All right, let's let's get into your art. So um, let's talk about this first one, deliverance. Yes. So, okay. So deliverance, 
love that feeling so much. I think that's one of my favorite meetings I've ever done. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I was going through just like a really difficult time and um, I could not find a job. And specifically, there was this one job I applied to that I really wanted to get. Um, and I was kind of waiting around to see if I would get it. And if I had gotten this job, it would have involved me breaking up with my boyfriend at the time, not my current boyfriend, so it's okay. And um, moving to Kansas City. Um, so it was a job from Hallmark. I didn't get it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, at that time, I was struggling a lot with that. And I was also just going through a lot in my personal life. And um, I remember during worship, I was just talking to God. I was like, God, I feel like I'm drowning. Like, and all these things I'm going through, I just am struggling. I feel like I'm drowning. And I had this vision of these ocean waves like splashing up to make these stairs leading up into the light. Um, and so that's really where deliverance came from that in that moment, God was speaking to me, like, even when you're drowning, there's a way out, there's a way to me, there's a way to the light, so yeah, and everything worked out, and um, yeah, like, I think it was a few months, or a year later, maybe, I don't know, I met my current boyfriend, who's definitely my soulmate, so it's fine, <laughs> and I just got a job recently, so um, it Congrats. all works out. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I love this piece. Yeah, it makes me think of, um, too, just like, um, you know, just the, the depiction of the, the ocean of how, you know, we, we have so many trials and tribulations throughout life, um, but we are told to fix our eyes on Christ and and we should be walking with them and so like the the steps leading up, it just makes me think of as we as we look to Christ, like we're walking closer and closer towards him and his heart and um and just leaning and trusting on him i love that yeah yeah i actually sold that painting and i miss yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was totally like that girl's painting like when mm -hmm. she bought it i was like and that's like i love when that happens right is like um you know sometimes people will buy a piece and not every piece sells um, and I don't want to pretend like it does, but I believe when it does, it always goes to like, it, like it was made for that person mm -hmm. because like the testimonies that people share, like about certain images that it's like, there is no way other than the fact that like God wanted me to paint this for them. Yeah. And yeah, there's literally nothing I'd rather do. So yeah. Amen. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Peace. Thank All right, you. number two, persecution. Persecution. This is actually one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I love this one. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this, I'm going to read the verse it was inspired by, which is James 112 mm. NIV, which says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So I love this verse, um, yeah. but I, okay. So the reason I did a rhino is um, rhinos are highly endangered um, because people keep hunting them for their horns mm -hmm. and the ivory that is in their horns. So rhinos at this point are, are close to extinct. I don't know the exact number, but they're highly endangered. Mm -hmm. um, and so this reminded me like of being a Christian, being persecuted, people persecuting us for our most valuable asset, right? So our most valuable asset is our faith in Jesus Christ and our relationship with him. And that is, you know, as we were saying before, like what people attack and persecute um, right away. Um, but when you persevere through the persecution and you're strong through it, you know, the Bible tells us we'll receive the crown of life. Mm -hmm which is like salvation coming face to face with Jesus and staying, staying strong in your faith, even through persecution. Um, 
because a lot of people can't do that. And a lot of people will lose their faith because of persecution and, um, and will encounter then a lot of doubt. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to use, right? He wants to use that and just like dig deep that resentment and that pain and dig it so deep to ultimately weaken your faith. But if we persevere through that, we receive the crown of life Um, and an eternity with Jesus Christ, which is the best thing. And, you know, I believe the whole point of life is to have a relationship with God and Jesus. So that is, that is persecution pretty much. So (laughs) yeah, I love it. Yeah. That's a, it's a fun looking piece. And now since you've explained it with the rhino, that is, is powerful. That's yeah. That's really powerful. I like that. James is one of, James is one of my favorite uh, uh, books in the Bible. It's oh, like the, yeah. That's like the Christian handbook. <laughs> <laughs> within yes. the handbook, within the Christian handbook. That's the Christian handbook within the Christian handbook. Yes, and I love it in the Passion Translation. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I love the Passion Translation a lot. So this third one, um, Fruitful Roots. Yes. What's the story? So that was one? actually right behind me, right there. Okay, um, yeah. You can hardly see it. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Way back there. Um, but this is actually one of my most recent paintings. Um, so I remember a while ago, this girl at church came up to me and she was like, I just feel like the Lord has a word for you. And I'm like, okay, you know, what is it? <laughs> and she's like, you know, right now you're growing roots. You know, and this was when I was still in art school um, at the time. She's like, you are growing roots right now. You're going through a lot, but your faith is roots. I was like, okay, that that's cool. Okay. Um, and then this whole year happened, you know, the quarantine and, um, you know, just a lot. Um, and I, you know, I went through a very traumatic experience in December. Um, and I think even last year, like I was going through some hard times. We were going through a lot. Um, you know, me and my family, me and my boyfriend, things like that. But, um, I kind of, I wasn't doing enough, right. In my faith. Like I wasn't reading as much as I should have been. Um, I was, you know, binge watching Netflix more than I should have been. (laughs) Um, You probably maybe feel me on that. Okay. Um, (laughs) But, you know, I wasn't really, I wasn't feeding myself. Right. Um, And so therefore the fruit that comes out of not feeding yourself spiritually can be anxiety and depression, but the fruitfulness that comes from spending time with Jesus as we see in the book of Galatians, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and Mm self-control. So this painting, um, I wanted to illustrate um, the fruit that comes from faith deeply rooted in Jesus. And you grow these roots of faith by going through trials and going through persecutions, going through really hard times. Um, But when you're going through those things in the meantime, when you continue to turn to Jesus, your life will show these fruits of the spirit. So in this painting, um, there are nine different elements and each um, one of the elements represents a fruit of the spirit. So on Instagram, I wrote the, uh, the different explanations. So for love, I had the flowers and the, um, flower petals floating through the roots. I have the butterflies as joy, the olive branches as peace, uh, the snail for patience, dolphin for kindness, um, the robin for goodness, seahorse um, is faithfulness, goldfish is gentleness, and the paw prints are self-control. So uh, and even furthermore, I can break down each element and why I chose those for each um, fruit if yeah. you want me to talk about that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, okay, so 
Um, flowers as love, kind of self-explanatory. Um, you know, flowers, the beauty of nature, the love of God. You know, we give flowers to those we love as a symbol of, um, you know, love, a gesture of service, right? Yeah. Um, the butterflies is joy. So this is a little bit personal, but a, a lot of, uh, I don't know if you have like what you would call a God sign or something that God like speaks to you through. But for me, it's always mm -hmm. been butterflies. Like I will always like see butterflies, um, but the way that they transform, they go from caterpillar to cocoon to butterfly. Mm -hmm. I see them as um, really just like resurrection and like transformation, like literally being wound up in this tight, dark space and then coming out with these wings, like being completely transformed to a beautiful new creature, um, which is joy. So um, then the olive branches are peace, um, which, you know, in the Bible, it talks a lot about olives and olive oil. Um, but specifically, I tie this back to uh, the story of Noah's Ark um, when the dove returns to Noah, brings him the olive branch. Um, that way they know the flood is coming to an end. Um, and so therefore there's a lot of peace that comes from that. But then in the rest of the Bible, they speak a lot about olive oil and olive branches and, and that yeah. being peace. Um, so the snail for patience, you know, a snail moves slow but steady. <laughs> so I think that one's pretty self-sanitary. Um, the dolphin is kindness. Um, because of their relationship with humans. Dolphins interact very well with humans. They get along with them. They're very friendly, very playful. Yeah. Um, and so I just see them as such a symbol of kindness. And when I was younger, me and my dad uh, swam with dolphins in the Bahamas. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is fun. <laughs> um, fun story there. But yes. Um, the robin for goodness. So I tie this back into, I believe in the book of Matthew where, you know, it says, look at the birds. They don't worry about anything. You know, God feeds them, God takes care of them. Yeah. Um, so that really shows the goodness of God. I believe that the birds and all elements in nature, really, they don't sit there and wonder, are we going to eat today? You know, what are we going to do today? But they just live and God takes care of them. I think that's definitely a symbol of goodness. Mm -hmm. um, so the seahorse I have for faithfulness um, because the seahorse is, if not the only um, animal slash creature um, that, yeah, if not the only one, one of the only ones where it's paternal. So the father actually takes care of the babies and the father, I'm pretty sure the, the father is the one who gets pregnant as a seahorse. Wow. I'm pretty sure. But I know the father is the one um, who takes care of little seahorse babies. Um, so I see that, you know, God, our father takes care of us. Mm -hmm. um, so faithfulness uh, in the sense of paternity. So I put the seahorse. Um, goldfish, I put for gentleness. Um, because, you know, they're very gentle and they just swim and glide and, you know, they don't bite or really do anything crazy. They're just goldfish, you know. <laughs> um, and for self-control, I put paw prints um, for a dog, specifically a dog that you would have as like a pet. Um, because we can train a dog to do certain things, right? So a dog, I mean, not every single dog, but most dogs are very loyal to their owners and they love them and they'll follow them. And so we can teach our dogs to do certain things, right? Like give me your paw, roll over, sit down. Um, you know, when you first start to train a dog, they're like not going to listen, right? They just want the treat. They're going to be like confused, mm -hmm. but as you continue to teach them, they eventually learn how to do the thing you're teaching them. They eventually learn the trick. And so it's like how God is teaching us his ways, 
throughout our lives, he's teaching us, okay, this is actually the right way to do things. This is the law I've laid out for you because it's out of love, because I'm your father. And so we develop self-control on how to pull back from temptations, to do the right thing it takes a lot of self-control, just as a dog has self-control to do a trick or to do the thing that you're teaching it. So that's pretty much every <laughs> symbol in the painting. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. There's a um, you you seem to be really into like nature art. Um, I, yeah, I, I guess animal and nature art. Yes, I am a huge animal lover, <laughs> as you can yes. probably tell. Um, yes. And there's uh, I found also that when I first started painting, I was really into doing portraits, mm -hmm. um, and I started to feel like limited on what I was able to say um at a certain point I felt like there was um more like symbolism with using all these different animals and nature elements like for me personally but um and then I started just getting visions like of mostly non-portraiture things so it kind of just happened but I do them occasionally yeah that's that's really cool. Yeah, I have um another artist that came on a few episodes ago. His name is Xavier Moss. And he like exclusively does animals to depict different scriptures from the Bible. And it's really cool. He's really into and I think he I don't know what it's called, but he studied whatever the study of animals is. That's what I think he studied. So <laughs> Cool. I don't know him, but I will definitely have to check him out. Yeah, you, you would love his stuff. You would love his stuff. I think it's X Moss, X Moss art. Instagram, something like that. Yeah. Cool. I will definitely check them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Catherine. So it, it was awesome talking to you. Uh, before we before we get off, um, is there anything else that you want to share with with the audience? And um, feel free to drop your social media handles and you know anything else you have coming up. Um. Well, if you guys want to follow my art, it is at Catherine Ward Art. Catherine with an A. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then my website is katherinewardart.net. I also make YouTube videos here and there, which is just Catherine Ward Art. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, it was great having you on. And um, I just encourage you to continue allowing the Lord to use you. I completely agree. I want to see more Christian art. I want to see more um, visual arts within the church. So yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for inviting me. I had a lot of fun talking with you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right, guys, um, make sure you follow Catherine on her social media. Check out her work and check out her website. She has amazing work. Of course, you just saw the three ones. Um, she has much, much more on her social media. So check her out. Um, follow us on Instagram and um, Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.